The following program has been pre recorded, so please don't call in at this time. If you wish to participate in the program, tune in at 5 p.m. every Wednesday for A Pause for Thought on Baton Rouge Community Radio. Good evening, Baton Rouge. Good evening, fellow humans. This is Wayne Parker with a pause for thoughts on Baton Rouge Community Radio, Baton Rouge Community Radio's only live call-in show so far. Uh, those of you who are new to the show, uh, just to remind everyone, we can you can call in, share your thoughts and insights with us. Um, dial 343-9927, 343-9927 if you're live streaming at whyr.org. Then dial the area code. Uh, if you're live streaming because you're outside the area, you know, the area, dial the area code 225, then 343 The only rule for calling in is that you voice your opinions and views respectfully and um, are just sensible and informed. We want, we want thoughtful discussion with thoughtful people. And speaking of thoughtfulness, tonight's we're going to discuss some of the insights of Marcus Aurelius, who was emperor of Rome in the late second century common era. And with me to share their thoughts on these insights, and hopefully you will too, are my regulars, Jim Brolin. Howdy, Jim. Hi, Wayne. And Johnny Parker. Hey, Wayne. Hey, good to have you guys here. It's always good to have you guys around. Okay, let me just give a little background on Marcus Aurelius, and then we'll really guess, and then we'll get to the insights that I chose to at least kick things off for the night. Um, I'm looking at the Penguin Classic edition of Marcus Aurelius's Meditation, uh, translated by Maxwell Staniforth, and that's important because it's an easier read uh, reading um, translation. But the book cover says. It was during his campaigns against the barbarians that the Roman emperor, Marcus Aurelius, CE 121 to 180, wrote his famous meditations. They record the passing thoughts, the maxims, the musings on life and death of a sensitive and humble mind which had been trained in the Stoic philosophy that contributed so much to Christianity. So that's, keep that in mind, folks. This guy was alive um, almost 2,000 years ago, so... Um, and a lot of his uh, insights, of course, were he was talking to himself or thinking to himself, but they certainly apply to us today, at least in my opinion. Okay, Johnny, Jim, the first meditation of Marcus Aurelius that I started out with was, uh, and I'll quote here, I'm not going to keep saying quote, but Aurelius stated, look back over the past with its changing empires that rose and fell, and you could foresee the future. Its pattern will be the same down to the last detail, for it cannot break step with the steady march of creation. To view the lives of men for forty years or forty thousand is therefore all one, for what more will there be to see? Johnny, Jim, what do you think of that? What, what kind of thoughts did that provoke in your minds when you read that? That reminds me of a real common quote by speakers you hear a lot by George Santana, who said, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to the future. We hear that a lot. That yes. Quote. And um, one of the things I think those of us who presume to have learned from history have learned is that <laughs> people don't learn from history. <laughs> Johnny, how about you? Well, to me, Wayne, it, uh, it makes me think that basically as human beings, we don't really change. We haven't really changed a lot in 2,000 years in terms of what we feel uh, once we have our basic uh, needs met. Then we move on up the ladder, and we want to control other people. We want to control other societies, and we want to control the natural world. So... You know, hence, a lot of strife, a lot of wars, and it looks like they're over, continuing. Over and over again. But I have a question for you. You said we. Are you speaking for yourself? or um, Well, I'm... You, you got a mouse in your pocket or well, what? Well, uh, probably a lot of mice in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm alone. 
Well, so you you are inclined to push people around and rule them and, and all that? Uh, I think it's a society, yes. You know, and I'm part of that society. Okay, right. But, um, know? I mean, I don't have any desire to push people around or anything personally, and I guess that's what I'm asking you. You right. personally, you don't care I don't. I don't think I have a personal inclination, but I think I do. It happens. Well, it is part of our humanity, I suppose. Right. It just happens to be the... It happens to be, for us anyway, one that we did not indulge or feed, so to speak. Um, what struck me about this was, and this is why I mentioned it in the uh, introduction, the background on Marcus Aurelius, was that he observed, he, he thought to himself to look back over the past with its changing empires that rose and fell. And this was almost 2,000 years ago that he was looking back on all these empires that rose and fell. Now, it just occurred to me that he was talking about the Roman Empire, but still, you know, obviously at that time, the cycle of humanity was going on and on and on, the same every time, even before him, you know. And one of the things that this made me think of, too, is, um, and it actually gave, caused me to give up entirely on politics uh, some years back, and I've since adjusted, why bother to fight what's going on right now? Because it's going to happen anyway. You know, you might be able to stop specifics, but, you know, can we really stop the general trend of this country and the world? And before you guys answer, uh, I want to remind our listeners, you can call in and share your thoughts and insights at 343-9927, 343-9927, or dial the area code 2 if you need to, area code 225. Um, how about it, guys? I mean, what's the point of even trying if it's all going to happen the same anyway? Think you got, I think you got to try. <laughs> There's a lot of good that's happened, a lot of progress since the second century. Uh, we feed more people. There are more people living today, ten times as many. Which presents its own time. problems, too, yes. But we can feed them, yes. <laughs> which is good. Yes. We have some um, ideas of democracy. Maybe they came from the Greeks who came before the Romans. But we're using some of those great ideas. Yes, and some of the lessons uh, learned, too. And some of the lessons learned. And the big problem is we're, uh, our, our next empire to destroy is the Earth if we don't do something about the ecosystem, uh, about the Earth warming. And those problems, if we, if we can't face those, we're going to do the maximum end of the empire. I think you're right. I think you're right. And um, I often wonder, and I've mentioned it on the show before, too, if maybe the destruction of the habitability, I'll say, for er, for the human beings and most animals on Earth may be part of the cycle, too. Maybe everything will go away except for the plant life and the, the microbes and whatnot, and then the process will start over again and take another billion years to progress. I don't know. But that would make sense to me if, if it's going to be consistent with the cycle of the life cycle of humanity, the steady march of creation, as Marcus Aurelius called it. Okay, you guys have anything else on that one? We'll move on to the next one. Actually, the next one. Yeah, you mentioned ahead of time you would prefer that, or you you favor well, that, that was, was your that was a, that was another one down. But when you ask a question, um, sometimes you. You or other people may have a tendency to throw their hands up, you know, say, well, what can we do? You know, what can right. I? Number two sort of reminds me of that. And, you know, the way I read it is that possibly um, he could have been referring to there when he says remembering what the world nature is. Hang on, oh, Johnny. Okay. Let, let, me, let me share the insight with the audience first. Okay. Okay. We're not, we're not sitting around at Socrates Cafe right now. We, we, um, just kidding. Come on, smile. <laughs> um, yeah, what Johnny was starting to um, talk about was the second insight that I brought or provided, which states, remembering always what the world nature is and what my own nature is and how the one stands in respect to the other, so small a fraction of so vast a whole. Bear in mind that no man can hinder you from conforming each word and deed to that nature of which you are a part. Now, Johnny, you were starting to go off on that. Hopefully I didn't interrupt your train of thought. Um, I think probably what uh, came to mind there is 
when he talks about a vast whole and we're so small that nobody really can hinder us depending regardless of how small we are compared to the rest of the universe no matter how small we are to the rest of society we do and can conform each word and deed to our own nature regardless yeah and I have to agree with you and even um, as we've talked about on the show before uh, Victor Frankl in his uh, man's search for meaning stated that he learned that he that was an insight he gained from living through the Nazi work camps was that the one thing that um, uh, another man cannot take away from you is your ability to decide your attitude toward the given situation. You always have the ability to choose how you're going to react, what you're going to do. But you have to look at who's writing this and when he's writing it, when he talks about where one stands in respect to the other. This is a general, a very successful Roman general. And he lives in a time where people are born in their place. They know what they're born to be. And when he talks about they should know their place and respect their place in the order, that's a general who has an army that has to obey every whim he has. Uh, I don't know if that's so that place and world nature that he talks about is very applicable today. You're always cynical, Brendan. <laughs> Actually, boy, the way I see it, and naturally I'm going to challenge that view or give a different view anyway, but he's, he's talking to himself only, really. And he does acknowledge in other insights, which I haven't shared here, he describes humanity as... Um, well, he, he also... I mean, he, he said a lot of things that showed that he felt that he, because his, of his position, he had a duty toward other people. Um, because he was a Roman and a man and a general, he all that chauvinism implied, you know, but he felt that he had a responsibility, and other people like him had a responsibility to look out for the general public and the welfare of Romans, of course. Anybody outside of that didn't count, of course, but, uh, you know. But, yeah, I guess there is some of that. He, obviously, his, his, he probably never even thought about the fact that he was privileged, other than, the, you know, he saw it as a duty, really. But he definitely had an easier life than most people. But he, you know, he was talking about his own um, nature in respect to the other. And what really struck me there, Jim, is uh, and Johnny, is again, this is over almost two thousand years ago, and even there, he understood that we we're just tiny, tiny, insignificant specks yes. in in reality, in in the grand scheme. So um, yeah, and getting back to Johnny's point too. I thought of the, um, that when we were discussing why we don't choose to dominate others and things like that, because we choose to take the higher road, so to speak. We um, we make that choice. We we choose not to. And also, too, I think we all all three here. Part of the reason why we're doing these shows is because we feel compelled to contribute something positive to you know, American society and therefore the world by sharing our thoughts and insights and provoking people to think about things and equally important, um, gaining insights from the listeners who call in and share their thoughts and views. And uh, on that note, you can call in and share in the discussion here at 343-9927, 343-9927. You're listening to Wayne Parker with Jim Brolin and Johnny Parker on a pause for thought. Um, Johnny, anything more on the, the second quote? Jim? Okay. Okay, let's go on to the third one then. Um, Marcus Aurelius stated, Were you to live 3,000 years or even 30,000, remember that the sole life which a man can lose is that which he is living at the moment. And furthermore, that he can have no other life except the one he loses. This means that the longest life and the shortest life amount to the same thing. Um, Johnny, what was the thing that struck you about that? You said that that really provoked something in, in your pumpkin hade. Well, when, he's, when he says, Wayne, at the moment, <clears throat> at the beginning, so he defines at the moment is the only thing we can lose, a man can lose, and no other except that moment. So to me, what he's talking about that moment is the present moment. Right. 
in the present moment is the only thing we can lose because as soon as we experience it, it's not the present moment anymore. So we lost it. And if it hasn't it happened yet, we haven't experienced it yet. Exactly. Right. So he's talking about the present moment, which is definitely in our, you know, the, the news that we read about now the last 20 or 30 years. We have lots of speakers, lots of authors and writers speaking about live in the present moment. Yes. Lots of therapists. Live, be, here, be here now. Be yes. here now. That's correct. So that's what I get out of that one. Sure. And the Buddha realized that too. You know, back hundreds of years um, before the common era, so to speak. Um, so, yeah. Um, but I, I was curious, and maybe I'm reading too much into this, but his statement that um, a man can have no other life except the one he loses. Uh, if he loses it, he doesn't have it anymore. So... I don't understand. I mean, what was your thought on that? Did you catch that? I did. And what I get out of that is that his definition of life is the present moment. And there is no other life except the present moment, which you lose as soon as you experience it. All the rest of it is the past, is Thank the memory. You. Thank you. I guess, I don't know if that's what he meant. We can't ask him, obviously, but <laughs> that makes sense to me. That yeah. clarifies it so I can stop that's wondering. Good. Jim, you, I agree with that. Okay, yeah, I, I, I had me kind of like what? So I'm glad that I got another insight from from one of you guys. Thanks, Johnny. Okay, this next one I was is kind of near and dear to my heart, although it's by no means my favorite, which I told Jim and John I refrained from including here. Oh, but the rate we're going, we might get to it. Um, but anyway, the fourth insight that I brought is uh, for a human soul. The greatest of self-inflicted wrongs is to make itself, so far as it is able to do so, a kind of tumor or abscess on the universe. For to quarrel with circumstances is always a rebellion against nature, and nature includes the nature of each individual part. How does that, how do you look at that? I, I just kind of see that as a go along to get along kind of argument uh, it falls back into talking about knowing your place uh, don't, don't don't be a rebel don't complain uh, you, you become a tumor on the universe if you, you are distorting things if you want to make those changes or if you're unhappy with that but let me <clears throat> can I can I your place in nature right yeah. can I clarify something for you um, could there not be a difference between um, quarreling or complaining about the things people around us are doing um, compared to uh, complaining about the universe? I mean, if, if we believe, if you all of us believe that we want to conform our lives to our natures and the larger nature of the whole, then are we making ourselves abscesses or tumors on the universe by trying to get people who are at complaining or railing against establishment and things like that. Are we, are we, is that what we're doing with ourselves or are we simply complaining about them? Are they the ones, com you know, making themselves? I think, I think he's talking about the self-inflicted wound. Self-inflicted is the key word. And then, crime against nature and he divines earlier nature is the way things are right and your place in nature so self-inflicted wound means he's doing something against the system which is he sees as met as nature, nature right natural. that's how I read that okay no I, I go along with that too uh, but com not com I don't want to say complaining I guess this insight in particular and just generally living long enough to figure it out enabled me to calm down about the way things are going in the world i still speak out against it because i see that as my obligation as a human being same as you guys i think but i don't get upset about it i don't um have anguish or anything because uh i'm just doing what i think is right and Everything else is pretty much going to take care of itself anyway. You know, I might be able to help individual people here and there. But uh, as an example, uh, when I was a libertarian zealot, uh, I think I was making myself an abscess or tumor 
on the universe as much as I, a, a person can do so because I was so sure of myself and my views were so one-sided and that's not natural that's not nature you know nature isn't black and white nature is a big continuum of all kinds of stuff I think so I mean that's what I'm getting at and I was afraid you were you were lumping uh, everyone into that same thing just because we're unhappy with the way things are going well I see this self-inflected coming again from a general if you order and your troops are you say march straight ahead and you decide to march backwards or somewhere else you're that's a self-inflicted uh, wrong against nature I think in his thinking where you deviate from where the crowd the group okay but keep in mind the values he, are these thoughts he was applying to himself he was thinking these to himself and right. evaluating his life so he was mainly um, just these are these are notes to himself basically they were his journal so I don't really think he was considering anybody else when he thought of these things he was just looking at his own life and that's that's the way I look at it so you know like I said so I, he wasn't really considering a in fact he he has a lot of self criticism in here and acknowledges his faults and I think it's because he just was that wise and he understood now he was privileged in the fact that he had time to think about these things he didn't have to worry about finding his food or you know stuff like that and once he finished being an emperor presuming he, assuming they didn't kill him you know at the end of his reign um, he retired and went into peaceful rich retirement you know but anyway um, like I said I, I just don't know if I agree that he's he's you know talking about people re remaining subservient because that's certainly he did not interpret that as the world nature uh, so much as it was the nature of his society that he was in mm -hmm. you know and he had a role in that but um, I, he, I guess they see him he's different than many wealthy and powerful people today are um, because he he didn't see his power as a tool to use to enrich himself so much you know kinda like Warren Buffett and other people like that they they um, freely share in fact I, I remember an interview of Warren Buffett where he said hey I don't mind paying taxes I'm aware that I did not get where I am all by myself people had to build roads people had to um, take away my garbage people had to build my house and all that stuff he he understood that nobody does it all by himself and that we're a team effort humanity is a team effort so I guess hopefully I didn't blather too long on that one but uh, anyway I want to remind our listeners uh, you're listening to Wayne Parker Jim Brolin and Johnny Parker on a pause for thought on Baton Rouge Community Radio and you can call in at 343-9927 343-9927 and share your thoughts and insights uh, about Marcus Aurelius and his thoughts. Anything else on a human soul and um, can, it, and in self-inflicting uh, harm on its own? Okay, I guess I kind of garbled that summation. But okay, the second one here um, is kind of a tough one, I think. Or the the next one, put from you the belief that quote I have been wronged and with it will go the feeling reject your sense of injury and the injury itself disappears do you buy that I buy it hook yeah. line and sinker that sounds very much like the Buddha here again as you mentioned okay okay um, you don't hold a grudge if somebody does you wrong in some manner because uh, you're You just hurt yourself the way it reads, um, but it'll go away if you don't hold a grudge or don't. Yeah, I know. You accept the injury. I guess he's talking about. And I would, I would agree with that. And the way I would interpret it would be, to go with it would be as forgiveness. Forgiveness is defined by letting go, and I know when I let go, it's healthier for me. Sure. Okay, because I think when I when I hold it in, he calls it wrong, injury. I think that's almost literal. I think I do feel injured physically and, you know, it, it, it manifests itself as physical. 
loosely. When you nurture the anger and the grudge. Exactly. Right, yeah. But then when you put it, put from you that belief, then it's like you are as you think you are. So if you let go of it, you don't think you're injured anymore. Or right. you let go of that feeling. If it's if it's something in my in my way of, of redressing that or responding to that idea is that yes, it, well, first off, I wanted to mention that uh, I think the idea of forgiveness is misunderstood or misrepresented um, to a lot of people. I I think it's exactly what Jesus was talking about when he said it was important to forgive. It's not a gift or an act of grace to the offender. It's so that you can just keep on living your life and not not dwell on the past and not dwell on the hurts. Um, of course, I think it's certainly legitimate to um, minimize your exposure to people who offend you a lot, but that doesn't mean you have to feel anger or dislike for them. Just stay away from them is how I see it. And that way they can just live their lives the way they want to, and I can live mine without being bothered by them, you know. And, and vice versa. I'm sure there are some people that stay away from me for the same reasons. But, um, okay, uh, I think, oh, no, another thing I wanted to mention about is as far as putting, your, putting away the belief of I have been wronged, um, what I like to point out sometimes, too, is when someone gets angry about the way people behave, I like to ask them, well, do you get angry at the force of gravity when you drop a nice dish and it breaks on the floor? Do you get angry at the rain when it ruins your plans for a day? And if they say, no, that's silly, I'll say, well, then why do you get angry at people? Aren't people doing bad things to each other just like the rain? Don't we do bad things too now and then to each other? So just the way I look at it, just roll with it because it, the roles could be reversed, really, you know. So what's the point of being indignant? But anyhow... Those are just my ruminations. We've got a few minutes left, uh, and I'm learning to go past the uh, precise uh, analog clock on the wall to avoid having my last recording jump in. But anyway, the last um, insight from Marcus Aurelius that I brought with us to uh, talk about is whatever the world may say or do, my part is to keep myself good just as a gold piece or an emerald or a purple robe insists perpetually, whatever the world may say or do, my part is to remain an emerald and keep my color true. And that's, that kind of goes along with everything else, I guess, huh? What, you know, we've been talking about. Be true to yourself. But all those symbols uh, are symbols of high power. Well, will you stop it with that power, Jim? <laughs> <laughs> well, the emerald, the gold, well, the that's purple true. robe. That's the what he had robe. around him. Oh, yeah, yeah, but that's what he had around him, yeah. He wants to remain there. He'll be true to that. Well, he might just as well have said, um, uh, my, my goal in life is to remain a spear, just, you know, or remain myself just as a spear remains a spear, or something like that, you know. But his, his examples of the things around him were that. But, um, oh, man, Jim, you're killing me. But um, and I love it. It's it's fun, but um, yeah, I, I like that too. And I know a lot of people carry, or seem to carry their injuries, their past injuries, with them and use them as a way of identifying themselves. It's almost like a badge of honor anymore to be a victim. It's like you can claim that as uh, something that um, distinguishes you from people or whatever. And really, you know, when you think about it. Um, there is no distinction between us if we consider how small each of us is in relation to the grand scheme and how, you know, how the same so many human beings are. Um, on that subject, let me share a question of my own that we won't have time to completely flesh out. But uh, are we really different from each other? I mean, we are all unique, yes, but... Uh, what I'm thinking is maybe our uniqueness comes from the combination or degrees of things that we possess that are all in common with everybody else. Everybody wants to be loved. Everybody gets angry. Everybody um, wants to be happy. All these things, we all feel the same emotions just in infinitely different ways. And maybe we're only unique in the way those things combine with us and what we do with them. I don't... That was just something I thought of. Well, that love 
to be loved is uh, there's a def definition for everybody that's different, I think, and to be respected. Right, right. And so we might all want to be loved, but we all might want to be loved in a different way. Yeah. Or define love differently. Well, we want to we want to fit in um, too um, with society and be a, feel like we're a part of the whole. Yeah. Okay, we've got to go. I appreciate you guys. Um, talking with me tonight and i thank the listeners for listening in you've been listening to wayne parker with a pause for thought on baton rouge community radio and we're out of here i think the computer may be out of here anyway but anyhow y'all have a good evening and we'll see you next week